Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. Get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial at www.audibletrial.com forward slash adventures in audio. Over 150,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. Welcome to Adventures in Audio, a podcast featuring short stories by authors like Edgar Allan Poe, H.P. Lovecraft, and others. I'm Greg Bartley. To enjoy this podcast to the fullest, it's advised to remove all mental debris from your brain. And once the chasms of your mind are void of all mental contamination, you're ready to enjoy these classic stories. And now, here's your host, Robert Crandall. Greetings, dear friends. I'm Robert Crandall, your host. I'm delighted that you've chosen to join me for this podcast. You can find this podcast on several directories like iTunes and Stitcher, as well as others. And of course, our website, adventuresinaudio.net. And if you like listening to stories, please check out audible.com's free offer. Right now, you can sign up for a 30-day free trial and receive an audiobook free. Yes, you'll be able to get a free audiobook. You'll find books by Edgar Allan Poe, uh, The Complete Stories, Ooh, that should be good, The Dark World of H.P. Lovecraft, and our uh, author for the story on this episode, Hans Christian Andersen. There are several there. Also, for you Sir Arthur Conan Doyle fans, audiobook.com has several of those. You know, from Sherlock Holmes and his non-Sherlock Holmes stories are all there. And um, audiobooks are great. You can listen in the car or at home. And uh, they're great for the kids. They make an excellent gift. So there's 150,000 titles to choose from. So, I mean, they have every genre, not just the horror genre that we're interested in here for the most part, but have all of them. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, get... Uh, Get your 30-day free trial and a free audio book. Just go to www.audibletrial.com forward slash adventures in audio. And once again, I want to mention I am a voiceover provider. If you need a voiceover for a radio or TV commercial or anything else, corporate narration, documentaries, website narrations, or whatever, um, I can do it for you if you don't like my voice. <laughs> if, if my voice is not suitable, that's okay. I have friends in the business. Just send me an email, robert.c850 at gmail.com, and, and we'll get your project uh, taken care of for you. So this is Christmas, as John Lennon would say. And by the time you listen to this, it will be after Christmas. So I hope you had a very nice Christmas. Isn't it a pity, as George Harrison would say, that Christmas is under attack? Well, yes, it is a pity, even an outrage. I'm telling you, I will resist this attack on Christmas any way I can, and I hope you will too. I don't mean to turn this into a political podcast, I wanted to avoid that. <laughs> There's a myriad of those that I wanted. Yeah, well, anyway, but uh, an attack on Christmas is going too far and is unacceptable, and I will fight it uh, any way I possibly can. And uh, this has got to stop. It's just not uh, going to happen. This attack, this attack must end. You know, the, the story for this episode is about, well, it takes place at Christmas time. It's about a little girl who is trying to sell matches on a cold night, and she is unable to sell any matches. So she lights a match to provide warmth, and she sees things. And, well, wait till you see here, I guess, what she sees, and then you'll see what happens. Let's listen now to The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. Mo 
most terribly cold it was. It snowed and was nearly quite dark and evening, the last evening of the year. In this cold and darkness, there went along the street a poor little girl, bareheaded and with naked feet. When she left home, she had slippers on, it is true. But what was the good of that? They were very large slippers, which her mother had hereto worn. So large were they, and the poor little girl lost them as she scuffled across the street because the two carriages that rolled by dreadfully fast. One slipper was nowhere to be found. The other had been laid a hold of by an urchin, and off he ran with it. He thought it would do capitally for a cradle when he some day or other should have children himself. So the little maiden walked on with her tiny naked feet. They were quite red and blue from cold. She carried a quantity of matches in an old apron, and she held a bundle of them in her hand. Nobody had bought anything of her the whole live-long day. No one had given her a single farthing. She crept along, trembling with cold and hunger, a very picture of sorrow, the poor little thing. The flakes of snow covered her long, fair hair, which fell in beautiful curls around her neck. But of that, of course, she never once thought. From all the windows, the candles were gleaming, and it smelt so deliciously of roast goose. For you know, it was New Year's Eve. Yes, of that she thought. In a corner formed by two houses, of which one advanced more than the other, she seated herself down and cowered together. Her little feet she had drawn close up to her, but she grew colder and colder, and to go home she did not venture, for she had not sold any matches and could not bring a farthing of money. From her father she would certainly get blows, and at home it was cold, too, for above her she had only the roof, through which the wind whistled, even though the largest cracks were stopped up with straw and rags. Her little hands were almost numbed and cold, Oh, a match might afford her a world of comfort. If she only dared take a single one out of the bundle, draw it against the wall, and warm her fingers by it. She drew one out. How it blazed! How it burnt! It was a warm, bright flame, like a candle, as she held her hands over it. It was a wonderful light. It seemed really to the little maiden as though she were sitting before a large iron stove with burnished brass feet and a brass ornament at top. The fire burned with such blessed influence, it warmed her so delightfully. The little girl had already stretched out her feet to warm them too, but the small flame went out. The stove vanished. She had only the remains of the burnt-out match in her hand. She rubbed another against the wall. It burned brightly. And where the light fell on the wall, the wall became transparent, like a veil, so that she could see into the room. On the table was spread a snow-white tablecloth. Upon it was a splendid porcelain service, and the roast goose was steaming famously with its stuffing of apple and dried plums. And what was still more capital to behold was the goose hopped down from the dish, reeled about on the floor with a knife and fork in its breast, till it came up to the poor little girl. When the match went out, and nothing but the thick, cold, damp wall was left behind, she lighted another match, now there she was, sitting under the most magnificent Christmas tree. It was still larger and more decorated than the one she had seen through the glass door in the rich merchant's house. Thousands of lights were burning on the green branches, 
and the gaily colored pictures such as she had seen in the shop windows looked down upon her. The little maiden stretched out her hands toward them when the match went out. The lights of the Christmas tree rose higher and higher. She saw them now as the stars in heaven. One fell down and formed a long trail of fire. Someone is just dead, said the little girl. For her old grandmother, the only person who had loved her, and who was now no more, had told her that when a star falls, a soul ascends to God. She drew another match against the wall. It was again light, and in the luster there stood the old grandmother, so bright and radiant, so mild, and with such an expression of love. Grandmother cried the little one, Oh, take me with you. You go away when the match burns out. You vanish like the warm stove, like the delicious roast goose, and like the magnificent Christmas tree. And she rubbed the whole bundle of matches quickly against the wall, for she wanted to be quite sure of keeping her grandmother near her. And the matches gave such a brilliant light that it was lighter than at noonday. Never formerly had the grandmother been so beautiful and so tall. She took the little maiden on her arm, and the both flew in brightness and in joy so high, so very high, and then above was neither cold, nor hunger, nor anxiety. They were with God. But in the corner, at the cold hour of dawn, sat the poor girl with rosy cheeks and with a smiling mouth, leaning against the wall, frozen to death on the last evening of the old year. Stiff and stark sat the child there with her matches, of which one bundle had been burnt. She wanted to warm herself, said people. No one had the slightest suspicion of what beautiful things she had seen. No one even dreamed of the splendor in which, with her grandmother, she had entered on the joys of a new year. You've been listening to The Little Match Girl by Hans Christian Andersen. I wonder what he would think about the attack on Christmas. Will there be a Christmas next year? A new year is coming. Let's hope it's a good one. Thank you.